Fantastic. So we're starting sitting and we're starting with that little neck sequence that we do. So just begin by limbering the shoulders, so rolling and sitting however is comfortable for you for at the moment. So shoulder rolls. And then do tight squeezes up to the ears. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And drop and squeeze. And you can do that with a wonderful big sigh. <sighs> we'll do one more. Squeeze tight, hold, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And <sighs> let go. Okay, so hands crossed with the right at the front, left behind. And then the hands continue to feed round, fingers interlaced, and then come on up. And again, you can squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. Reach up, sitting up tall. Reaching the knuckles up and away. Just keep reaching up and twist to your right. And turn, keep pressing the knuckles up. Squeezing the shoulders, pressing up, pressing up. And then bring the arm behind. So you have right behind, left on the right leg. Twisting to your right. Looking behind you. Bit to the right. Squeezing the shoulder blade towards the spine. And you want to be able to feel the stretch through the front of the chest. How far can you look behind? So nose and chin traveling around behind you. Squeeze, squeeze. And then stay in the twist. So you're really pulling that right shoulder back. Bring your head back to the center and drop your left ear towards your left shoulder. So you're squeezing around, left ear down, still twisting. And then dropping the nose and chin towards your shoulder and under arm. Pulling the right shoulder back, nose and chin down. So lifting the head and then untangle, come back to the centre, sweep your arms up and this time make sure with your legs crossed you've got your right leg in front, reaching up, up and away, stretch, squeeze the shoulders, pressing through the hips and then stretch the arms in front of you. Sitting bones down and then we can do those little neck rolls. And walking the fingers further forwards. You can do little circles with the nose, you can do figure of eight, nose up and down, side to side. Slide the fingers further forwards. And then walk the hands back up. Roll the shoulders back and down, right hand down to the side, leaning into the right hand, pick up the left, reach up, over, and then drop your right ear down towards your right shoulder. So focusing on the contracting side, squeezing at the right, and do stretch through your left. So you have options with the arm. You can rest your hands on the back of the head and elbow pulls up. Or you can stretch in the back. And can you slide a little further over, keeping the hip down? And then inhale, lift the arm, head stays heavy. Pull from the fingers, slowly, slowly. Lifting 
and then head comes up, left hand down, and send the right arm away, stretching out to the fingertips, a little circle. So your left ear is towards the left shoulder. Sit nice and small and slow. Circle, circle. It's the right hand extending out. And the other way. So left ear to left shoulder. Slow it down and try a little bigger circle. Bring back, dropping down forwards. And then we feed the hand behind. So you turn her hand so the thumb points down, back of the hand behind you, bend at the elbow. And then feed the hand either into the lower back or wrap around. We're aiming to feel the stretch here across the front of the chest, head of the shoulder, head still hanging down. Perfect, good. So you've got your left ear dropping towards the left shoulder, the right arm feeding behind you. And you can pick up the left hand and put it on to the side of your head, pressing down. Lightly pushing the hand, the head into the hand rather, and release. Press and release. Press and release. Okay, slowly coming up. You can put the hand underneath and press, come up. Change the cross of the legs. So I have my left in front, left hand in front, right hand behind. Feed the hands around, fingers interlaced, and then pressing the muscles up towards the ceiling. So you can squeeze, shoulders up to ears, squeeze, squeeze. And drop, and then twist to the left. And open the arms, left hand comes behind, right hand on the left knee. Look behind you, how far can you stretch back with the nose and the chin and that left shoulder pulling back with the shoulder blade, squeezing towards the spine. Breathing into your heart. You can drop the right ear down towards the right shoulder. So you're still twisting round to the left. So the right ear drops towards the right shoulder. Feeling that stretch through the neck on the left side. Breathe into it. Ah, soften that sensation through the neck. Close your eyes. Relax the face, the jaw. Drop the nose and chin down. And then lift the head and come out as you twist. Sweep your arms up and away. Reach high, arching back slightly. Making sure you have your left leg in front, hips back, and then we stretch forward. You can just bring your hands in front and see a little bit of padding and forward, 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 or stretch all the way forward, bow down. Just tighten the shoulders. As you're bringing your weight forwards, open them a little. Do you remember that um, swan stretch we've been doing where I've been asking you to push your hips back on your exhale by pushing into the hand? So it's the same idea, keep your weight back into the hips, but stretch the fingers forwards. Keep the weight back into the hips, push back, rather than rolling onto the shins, calves. And you're pressing back on the exhale, stretching the fingers forwards. And then walking the hands back up, left hand down, and bring it some distance away, right arm up, hand behind the head or reach over, making sure your right hip stays down, stretch over. So it's left hand down, right hand up and over. And here, I didn't remind you on the other side, but 
I like to just kind of tweak it by lifting the elbow back slightly, looking up towards the ceiling so you feel that you're rotating the rib cage, the heart, opening it up to the sky. And the stretch changes shape and position. Fantastic. Okay, so the hand comes up, the head stays down, pull from the fingers, lift the spine back up, and then the head lifts, right hand down, and then the right ear drops to the right shoulder, stretch the left fingers away, and do the little circles, size of a golf ball, super small. And then change direction. And then do half speed and very slow. Half speed. And bigger, larger circle. Lovely. Be really nourishing for the shoulder joints. And then point the thumb down, bend at the elbow, hand into the lower back or feed the arm round and finding that stretch here through the front of the chest, draw the shoulder back. So I've got my right ear to my right shoulder and then my left hand behind. And then maybe the right hand holds the head. So you bring it up and over and you push and release. I'm pushing my head into the hands, not the other way around. Head into hand, release. Push head into hand and release and slowly, slowly come on up. Shake out the fingers, shake out the arms. <sighs> okay, so I thought we'd go as we started sitting for a change. This we'll go straight into some of the Ashtanga sequence. But the seated positions, and we're going to weave um, the sun salute in between here and there. So you want to be sort of halfway on your mat and having your legs crossed, crossing at the shins. And you're going to rock forwards onto the feet, come onto all fours, step back into your plank position, drop your knees down. And now roll your shoulders back. Exhale, dropping down to eight point pose. So you have your chin, your chest, feet, knees and hands on the floor. Just flatten yourself down and then roll your shoulders back and come up into our first back bend. So not too uh, forceful, just lifting as high as feels comfortable. Exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes under, push through your heels, knees come off the ground, feet hip width apart, hands underneath the shoulders and press back into downward facing dog. So you all know the practice well enough to know that if it doesn't feel right to come straight back into a dog just yet, then come back into that swan that we were doing weeks before where we were pushing back into the hips, stretching the fingers forward. And you can limber the legs by just padding Heading, giving the head a shake, have a yawn, stick your tongue out. <sighs> Super. Okay, so now from here, you come onto the knees, bring your feet to the side, hips back, and we land back in sitting. Okay, so we'll do that now and then in between the poses. So it's a, a vinyasa, a different way through the sun salute. So to fall forward over the legs, we need to have long hamstrings. If when you've landed, when you're seated, your tailbone is tucking under and you're rolling back onto your coccyx, then it's going to be more difficult to come through. So to start the tilt, we lean to the side, grab a hold of your bottom, pull your flesh out, find your sitting bone, and then go the other way. So the beginning, the forward fold by tilting the pelvis. Hands to your heart. Take a deep breath in, sweep your arms up and away and reach forwards towards your feet. So for some of you, the feet, especially at the beginning of the practice, are going to be a long way away. 
here you can just hold the back of the knee. Feel the movement as we go forward, wherever you are, it's coming here from the lower back. So you're hinging here from the hips, rather than coming forward and reaching, striving and stretching the mid back. So I have taught you this before where we, we go up and we go really, really high and then 45 degrees and lengthen again and then come down holding wherever is comfortable. So try different ways in. So we're just gently pressing forward, chin down, press. Using the exhale to press and push you in. So these are nice and calming. So in a, um, a true Ashtanga sequence, it starts with six sun salutes, then six of the Surya Namaskar B, so the one where we include the warrior pose. Then we go into standing poses and then you come to the calmer seated poses. Okay, breathing in, coming all the way up, sweep the arms high, lifting up. And exhale, hands to your heart. So we're going forwards again, and this time the hands come over the feet if you can reach them. If you can't reach them, try and reach further than we were before. So hands to your heart, inhale, sweep your arms up and away, lengthen and lift. Come forwards halfway. Stretch along the diagonal and then fold, trying to get your hands over the feet. If you can reach there, if not, just reach further down your legs. Pressing. Folding. Chin down. And so connecting with your breathing. Every time you breathe in, there's a inflation of the chest, there's that natural lift. It's like you've caught the um, a sperm or so you feel a bird flying in the sky and you caught the sperm and it lifts you. And then the sigh and ah, exhale, you lower a little deeper. And then you breathe and you catch that wave of breath again. It lifts you and then ah, exhale, gently press. Inhale, lift. Exhale. One more. As you exhale, inhale, come all the way up, open. And exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, so we're going to do that little vinyasa again. So you cross the legs, crossing at the shins, tuck the feet in. Rolling over the feet, come onto the hands, onto all fours, and then back into plank position. Exhale, lower down to the ground. Inhale, come up into cobra. Roll the shoulders back, elbows down. Tuck your toes under and push back. Downward facing dog. Hips up, head down. So let's do some facial tension and release while we're upside down. Just scrunch your teeth, face, tongue, lips, eyes, squeeze. Let go. <sighs> Open the face wide, stick the tongue out. <sighs> let go. And then wriggle the tongue around inside your mouth. I like to push it inside my gums, run it along the roof of my mouth, and squidge the lips around and wriggle the nose and the hole of the jaw going from side to side. <sighs> Okay, so from here, we're coming back into sissy. So we just drop onto the ground with the knees, swing the feet to the side, hips go back, legs come out in front of you. Fab. Okay. Pick up the right leg. Open it, and then we're going to fold over the left leg. So hamstring on that left side, so you need to lean into the right leg. Pick up the bottom on the left side, pull, find your feet, your sitting bone, hands to the heart. Inhale, sweep your arms up and away, lengthen, lift. Go halfway and then pull along that diagonal 
and then fold all the way over the left leg. And just gently easing in, just over the left leg. If it's really intense for you on the left leg, it's fine to have a little kink in the leg. Folding, head down, relax the shoulders. Ah. Notice those little lifts on the inhale, like that thermal of air underneath you, lifts you on the inhale. Catching it and then ah, exhale, sink, fold. And then inhale, lift. And ah, exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and opening. Exhale, fold. And next inhale, coming all the way up. Reach the arms up, stretch up and away. Exhale, hands to your heart, change your legs. Left leg in. Hold the bottom, lean into the left side, pull the hamstring, find your sitting bone, hands to your heart, breathing in, sweeping up. Fabulous, lift, lift, lift. Halfway, stretch along the diagonal, and then all the way down. Connecting with your breathing. Using the inhale to give you that lift, expansion, and the exhale to ah, sink you further in. Keep going. And the next exhale, fold a little deeper, and then breathing in, coming all the way up with the arms, sweep them up and away, lift. Exhale, hands to your heart. Back into that vinyasa, so we cross at the ankles, rolling over, hands onto the floor, step back, plank position. Exhale, lower down to the ground. Inhale, coming up into Cobra, well done. Exhale, push back into Downward Facing Dog. <sighs> okay, so we started off with warming up the shoulders. So now we're going to just get them, keep them limbering. So remember we were reaching up and we were squeezing the shoulders up towards the ear. So do the same thing now. Push into, in, the, in your Downward Facing Dog, push into the mat. Squeeze the shoulders towards your ears. And then isolating the shoulders, push through the hands, pull the shoulders away from the ears and press back to your heels. Going again, squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears, shrugging them, squeeze, and then roll them down. Once more, squeezing. And then roll them down, heart open, pushing back through the heels. Give your head a little shake. Keep the chest open, keep those shoulders rolling back. Okay, coming onto your knees and swing your legs around the other way so your toes go the other way. Sitting back, legs out straight. Okay, so left leg is the straight one, lengthen the hamstring again. Draw the right leg up. We did this a couple of weeks ago. So go this away so you can see me. So the right foot is over to the side with a hand, wide hand width between the, my instep and my inner thigh. So some of you might have your leg down here, wherever is comfy. The left leg is flexed, left hand behind. I'm sweeping my right arm up and reaching through that gap. Stretch forwards. The right hand, you then bring it to the side of the foot. 
and you fold. You may be able to bring this right hand behind you and the left hand reaches behind and holds the right hand very good. And then bow, chin to shin. Or you just got the hands here on your but at your side. Fold a little deeper, pressing, pressing. And then untangle the hands if you have them bound and slowly lift up with change sides. And go slightly side on so you can see. So right is the straight one, flexing the foot, left leg in, lengthen the hamstring on the right side. So it's you have that gap. So you can bring your chest forward. Right hand is behind and leaning into the fingers. Reach the left arm up. Exhale, stretch forwards. Reach as far forward as you can. Reach. So my hip, my left hips come off the ground. I'm reaching, reaching, reaching. And then thumb points down like we did in those shoulder exercises. Feed the hand around behind you or to the side. And the right hand finds the left. Good, if it's more challenging on this side, then just hand here. You can always reach the right hand down towards the right leg or just keep it to your side, keep the balance. And you're folding, folding forward. There's two breaths. One more big full inhale, exhale, ah, fold, fold, fold. And inhale, come all the way out. We'll go through that vinyasa again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you might want to have a go at jumping back. So you cross at the ankles, lift the feet off the ground like we would do for uh, Navasana. And bring the hands to the ground, lean in and then jump back into plank. I'll do that again to show you. You cross at the ankles, hands come forwards, push into the hands, shoulders, jump back and then exhale down. Or you can do as we did before, just cross onto the knees, onto the floor, step back, exhale down, inhale, come up into your back bend and exhale, push back into downward facing dog. Head shakes, Press through the hands, hips high. So when you're doing the um, primary suit, the, the uh, full Ashtanga sequence, as I said before, we start with the sun salute A and then B, six of each, standing sequence, and then you move to these seated poses. Between each seated pose, you do one of these vinyasas between the right side, left side, every time there's a vinyasa. Okay, so if you had a go at jumping back, you might want to have a go at jumping forwards to sitting. Or just come onto your knees, swing the toes around and sit. If you want to have a go at jumping forwards, maybe watch me first. So you come up onto the toes, bend your knees, look forward, and then hop and step your feet between the hands. I'll do that again, quickly, from down dog. Look forward, bend the knees, press into the hands and shoulders and sweep through. Take some practice. Hey, well done, Nikki. Good. All right, so legs out straight. And uh, which one haven't we done? Let's do this one. Uh, so grab a hold of the right leg, bend it and bring it to the side and you roll out the calf. If you have um, a yoga block with you or a cushion, you might want to place the block underneath your left hip, the left leg straight, so that you lift it a little bit and that will give you more space 
So tuck the leg to the side, right? Or sit down on the ground. If that is really bad for your knee, it does not feel good, then come back to this one with the sole of the foot onto the inside of the leg. Do not force it, please, no, or no troubled knees. Are we folding again? Hands to the heart, breathing in, sweep the arms up, lengthen, lift away. 45 degrees, stretch, and then all the way down, bow over the leg. So if you're comfortable with the, if the knee feels okay, foot feels okay, and you want to add an extra stretch for the hip, you walk the hands up, and you can do this in either leg position, and then you lean back, coming back onto the elbows. So I've got both of my hips down and stretching through the quad. So you come back onto the elbows, or maybe you can lie all the way down. You can stretch the arms up and over the head if you have space. Okay, so having a go halfway, you can come up onto the hands and just gently ease back, opening the quad, opening the hips. Be kind to the body, just see what works for you. Maybe then sink a little lower, maybe stretch the arms up and over the head, good. Well done, and then coming all the way up. And we'll switch legs. So if you use the block, pop it on the other side or a cushion. So we have the right leg straight, left leg, lift it, grab a hold of the calf, point the foot behind and roll your calf out to the side. Can you see I'm rolling it open? Toes point behind, hands to your heart. Inhale, sweep your arms up and away, and exhale, fold. If it's not right for the ankle or knee on this side, then back to this version with the sole of your foot onto the inside of the leg, bowing over the leg. And these forward folds are the same principle that you're using the inhale to give you that little bit of lift like you're catching a thumb on and exhale, bow, fold. Inhale, little lift, open. So now you know what's coming. You can either stay in this fold or you can untangle yourself and um, just watch or you can go back. So coming back onto the hand. Coming back onto the elbows, how does that feel? And then maybe going down even further. Well done. And slowly bringing yourself back up, untangling the leg through that vinyasa again. So if you want to have a go at the jump back, I'll talk you through it again. Otherwise, it's crossing the ankles onto all fours back into plank pose. So cross at the ankles if you're jumping back. Rock forwards into the hands, shoulders, jump back, plank. Exhale, down to the earth. Inhale, coming up and have a go at upward facing dog now. So hands and tops of the feet are on the ground, rolling the shoulders back, heart open, look up. Exhale, push back, downward facing dog. Feeling all four corners of your downward facing dog, both hands, both feet, spreading the hands, reaching down through the index finger, push through the hold of the hand, making sure the shoulders aren't shrugging up to the ears, pull them back and down, heart open. Press through the heels, draw your abdominal muscles up, suck 
one in, pelvic floor lift. Keep drawing up those abs. All right, so if you want to have a goat jumping forwards, it really helps to engage these, what they're called bandas, pelvic floor and abdominal muscles, lower abs. So pull up pelvic floor, abs engage. Looking forwards, bend the knees and hop through, extend the legs out. Next up and down, fab, fab, brilliant. All right, so you're doing really well. Left leg straight, right leg up and over. Familiar granny's twist that we do a lot. So sitting up nice and tall, um, right hand round, left hand on top, squeeze, hug, hold. Roll the shoulders back, sit up nice and tall. Returning towards the bent leg. So we've got your arms the wrong way around. So you're turning towards the right leg, left hand holds, right hand behind. Pull the right shoulder back, squeeze round to the right. Maybe you could bring the elbow around the outside of the leg. So it's left elbow outside of the right leg. And that twists you further around, so you, it helps rotate your left shoulder further round, right shoulder further back. Okay, looking to your right, over your right shoulder. Squeeze. And inhale. And all the way out. Change the cross of your legs. Right is a straight one, left one up and over. Hugging with the right arm, left arm squeezes in, sit up tall. And then bring your left hand behind you. Pull the left shoulder back, perfect. Right arm wraps around the left leg. Hold and then maybe the right elbow comes to the outside if you have that rotation in the spine outside of the uh, left leg, right elbow, left leg. Looking behind, drop the shoulders, raise the chin to the left. Inhale, coming all the way out, untangle. Okay, one of those lovely vinyasas again. So, cross at the ankles, hands push, jump back, plank pose, or just step back, all fours, then into plank. Exhale, lower down, low plank, push from the feet, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hips up, head down. Rooting through the hands, back and downward facing dog. Rooting through the index finger, spreading the fingers, pressing through the heels, abs engage. Give your head a little shake. So the jumping back and jumping through is called learning to fly in Ashtanga yoga. And you need to kind of really get a little spring in the toes, a bend in the knees, and use your core muscles to help you lift up and through, back, and then through the hands as we jump forward. Okay, so let's get prepared to come forward. So you can just come onto the knees and swing the legs round, or look forwards, bend the knees onto the toes, abs engage. And Hop through. These look good, what I can see looks really good. Well done. All right, so Navasana, great pose. Knees in, roll the shoulders back, lift the shins so they're parallel with the floor, and then maybe straighten them. So I've still got my hands 
behind the thighs supporting where you could bring them out behind you. Long limbs, long spine. Draw your abdominal muscles in, lower rib cage sucks in, hold or soften, hands behind. Okay, so we cross at the ankles and squeeze and hug in. Now this I've been teaching you for years. This is sort of the in-between in the Ashtanga Yoga sequence. So they hug in and squeeze. And you can have a go at this. So bring the hands down to the ground, but keep the feet up and push and try and lift off, keeping the feet off the ground. You can do that again. So everything squeezed, tucks into a ball, round, hands on the ground, and then press into your hands and lift the hips. Lift off the ground, lower down. We'll do that again after the next one. So back into Navasana. You can have a go at holding the feet if you can reach your toes. Straight legs. Or as before. Okay, have a go at that lift off again. So we, we, we don't have to, you can just curl up and hold or hands down, tuck in, press through the hands, push through the shoulders and lift the hips off the ground and try and get the feet up, it's really hard. Release, last one, come on up. And whether you've got a hold of the feet or not, you could open the legs wide. You could just hold the back of the thighs instead. Mm -hmm. Have another go. Okay, crossing, hugging, squeezing. You can have another get another go at the lift. It's fantastic for strengthening the shoulders and the wrists. So you're curling up, pushing, press away, lift, and release. So I did say that was going to be the last boat pose, and I just thought it'd be quite nice to include something else. So you need space around you, behind you. Okay, so I'll, I'll do it first and then we can have a go. So you need space behind you. So we come into boat here, legs wider. Just watch me first. Point the toes, legs wide, either holding the back of the thighs or the feet. And then you roll the spine down and bring the hips up and away. And I've got my legs really wide. Point the toes, hands come up. All right, do that again so we can do it all together. Make sure you've got space out behind you, not going to click into your plants or whatever, printers, chair, chairs. All right, so here we go. Navasana, come on up. And you open your legs wide, point the toes, holding the back of the thighs or the feet. Okay, get ready to roll. So you tuck the tailbone under, roll down, lift the hips, point the toes open, the legs wide. <laughs> Brilliant. Fabulous. And then bring the hands, you can, toes can reach the ground, you bring the hands up in front of you, prayer position. And then bring the legs together and slowly, slowly roll back down. Knees into your chest and just do a little bit of rocking from side to side. Brilliant, everybody. So now we're moving on to uh, the closing sequence it's called in the Ashtanga practice. And that's a lot of upside down things and a bit of bridge pose as an alternative if you don't want to come into shoulder stand. So again, just think about the space around you. I'll show you what we'll be doing. So if you want to, we're coming up into shoulder stand, like so. Yeah. 
And then if you want to, you're bringing your legs behind, coming into plow pose. So you need space behind you. Yep, and then we're coming down. We're then going to cross the legs and have a go at a balance on the shoulders. And then roll down and come into the fish pose, which is just on your mat. You don't need lots of space for that. Okay, so get yourself organised. If you don't want to practice shoulder stand, so ladies, if you're menstruating, you shouldn't be turning yourself all the way upside down. If you have any uh, neck issues, um, then it's not great. Blood pressure issues. So that's when we would be doing shoulder stand instead. Otherwise, let's have a go at those who want to join me in shoulder stand. So lying flat, pointing your toes, arms down by your side, chin tucks in. So please um, listen to my instruction and don't turn your head and look at the screen. Because as soon as you start to move your head about, if you've got weight on the neck, then you're going to give yourself a problem. So if you tuck your chin in, look up at your ceiling and keep looking up. Don't look at your screen. So hands down, palms down, point your toes, squeeze the legs tight together. And then on an inhale, set the knees into the chest, lift the hips, pop your hands on your lower back. Keep the legs squeezing tight together, point your toes, draw your abdominal muscles in and use your abs to pull your hips up, walking your hands up, up, up the back. So it's called shoulder stand. So find the weight on the shoulders. You can feel it obviously on the back of the head, but not on your neck. So push the shoulders down, stretch the toes up to the ceiling and hold here. 20 breaths. Those of you doing bridge, you can hold for about eight breaths. Come down, do that. Repeat that sort of three times. So stretching the toes up and away, feeling that weight in the shoulders. You could try just tucking the elbows a little closer towards each other, walking the hands a little higher at the spine, drawing the abs in, squeezing the toes of the legs together, toes pointing up. You could cross at the ankles, push the heels up, lift up from the heels, squeezing the inner thighs together. You could go the other way, squeeze, push the heels up and away, up and away. And then from here, keep one leg up and drop one leg behind you. It doesn't have to touch the floor. Change legs. <sighs> Keep breathing deeply. Okay, coming all the way back up, back into shoulder stand. And then from here, coming down into the plow. So hands stay on the hips and you lower both legs down together. Hovering in the air if you can't reach the floor. Point the toes if you can. Toes stretch along the mat. Interlace the fingers. Rooting the shoulders, elbows, little fingers into the mat. Point the toes. All right. So to come out, she was going to do a little balance from here. Hands onto your lower back. Bend the knees and then cross your legs as if you're sitting on the floor, cross-legged. And then, leaning into the shoulders, weight in the shoulders, you pop your hands underneath the knees. Find your balance point. Balancing on the shoulders with the knees in the air. Fab, okay, so slowly roll back down, so knees into the chest, slowly, slowly roll the spine back down to the mat. Well done. Slowly, slowly roll down, roll down, roll down. Ah, it's a great release for the spine. Last one is called the fish push, Matsyendrasana. 
So this can be done if you're comfortable with your legs crossed, it's done with the legs crossed, it's actually done in the full lotus. So if you if that's available to you, then legs in lotus pose, otherwise legs crossed, or you can have your legs out straight. Legs are down on the ground and come up onto your elbows. Again, can you just watch me before you have a go? So my legs are in lotus pose, but you can have them just cross your legs out straight and you come onto your elbows. And then you lean the head back. So you're opening the throat. You drop the head back, drop the head back, come onto the crown of the head. And you've got weight in your elbows, weight in the hips, weight in the legs, weight in the top of the head. If that feels okay for your neck, you then straighten the arms. You can hold the feet if you're in the lotus or arms together. Okay, we we'll do it together. So the legs straight or crossed. And maybe you in a half lotus. Come onto your elbows and drop the head back. If it feels weird with your neck, then chin tucks in and just lift up through the chest instead. And so if it's okay for the neck, then we walk the elbows forward and drop the head, keeping the chest lifted, finding the floor with the crown of the head. Keep some weight in the elbows, pressing through the top of the head, the hips, the thighs. Lift the heart, lift the chest. So you're stretching and opening the front of the body, an amazing back bend. Stretch the heart up towards the sky. Breathing into your heart. Maybe you bring the hands away so you take the weight fully on out of the elbows and onto the top of the head. Maybe you straighten the arms, palms together. And then take the weight back onto the elbows. Tuck the chin in, lift the head. Head back down on the ground, back of the head on the ground as normal. Knees into your chest and rock from side to side. Very well done for difficult, challenging Maxi Andrasana. So just bring your feet onto the floor, hip width apart, arms out to your side, and just flop the knees from side to side. Well done. <sighs> side to side. Having a yawn. <sighs> Finishing on the opposite side of the one where you started. Having another hug of the legs. Get your extra layers on and then we'll move into a wonderful relaxation. So snuggling down into your little yoga nest, your space of rest and relaxation. So you can be completely flat, slide a blanket over you, close your eyes. Maybe put an eye pillow on to block out the light. You could just, I've got a hood, so sometimes I would just pop the hood over my eyes to shut the light out for a few minutes. You just put the scarf over your eyes to rest them. And as I always say, after that Ashtanga, moving, 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 you just have that blissful, oh, arise. Well done. Giving thanks to yourself for nurturing practice of yoga. Letting any tension and stress disappear out of the Toes, soles of the feet, ankles, calves, knees, and the thighs. Ah, then to the hips, letting go, letting go. Ah. Soft and relaxed, pelvis, lower back, mid back, upper, holy 
spine and around in the front of the torso, the lower abdomen, reproductive organs, solar plexus into the waist, into your rib cage, left and right side of the chest, the heart and the arms, shoulders. Oh, letting go of the torso, letting go of the legs. Relaxing the upper arms. The elbow with the forearms, the wrists, backs of the hands, palms of the hands, thumbs and your fingers. Both legs, both arms, the torso. Oh, yes, and go. Relaxing around the neck, front, the side, left side, right side, and the back of the neck. Back of the head forehead, crown of the head, temples, forehead, jawline, around your eyes, in between the eyebrows, cheekbone, down the nose, the nostrils, and to the tip of your nose. Letting go from the tip of the nose, across the whole of your body. Release, relax, let go, let go, let go. Both legs, both arms, the torso, the head. Welcoming yourself back home to yourself. Welcoming back home to deep breath. And you start to wake up, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. And you can stay for longer, please do, if you want to. Coming up to 15 when you're ready, if you want to. Hands to your heart. Take a big breath in, sweep your arms up and away. And exhale, bow forward. And inhale. Bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes so you can just gaze down and face after me with deep love and respect. I honour my heart, my inner teacher. With deep love and respect, I honour my heart, my inner teacher. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining me. Well done, everybody. I'll stop the recording. Thank you. Say goodbye.